Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Today I'm going to show you some small hive beetle treatment that I did combating a severe hive beetle problem that was killing hives. And it was strong hives, really strong hives. I would break the hives open and there were so many small hive beetles in there. The adults, and I made, this, I made this comment on another video, the adult small hive beetles wouldn't hurt a hive. The bees would, strong colony would run them out. Well, uh, caught me a liar, whatever. I got proved wrong because I lost two triple stack strong colonies to adult small hive beetles this spring, this, well, in the past week. And uh, acted pure desperation. I just started pulling out traps and throwing peppermints at them and doing anything I thought I could do to get rid of these small hive beetles. And I'll tell you later on in the video how that turned out and what worked for me. Today I'm adding beetle traps. These are beetle gels. They got three compartments, two for oil, one for apple cider vinegar. I've got a concentrate here just because it was the only thing I had. A little baby dropper from Dollar General. Cooking oil for the sides. These things pop open like this, center compartment like this, apple cider vinegar in the center, center compartment, and then snap the outsides closed. These legs hang over the sides of the frame top bar. I think I have 50 in this bag and I have another 100 in the house. And I'm putting mints, uh, peppermints in all the boxes as well. Just pulling out all the stops because the beetles are super super bad this year now to be fair i do not know if the peppermint method has any effect whatsoever there's been a few people that say it does not really a lot of people have done any long-term testing on it this is a method that hillbilly beekeeper earl started showing i tried it for a couple or four weeks earlier in the year but didn't keep it up long enough to see any results or, or last year rather you see a few hive beetles crawled around in this one not many i'm almost expecting them to be drawing comb on the bottom of these frames this was a really heavy cutout that i did I ended up using two bvax to collect them all and i put newly waxed foundations in little testy not bad overcast day forecast to rain in about an hour i'm about to pull these frames out and see what they've got drawn i'm 99 certain they've got all these frames drawn out and they may even have something built on the bottom because like i said it was a lot of bees thankfully there's nothing on the bottom but i see a lot of a lot of work going on there getting stung in the stomach as we speak I'm looking good I do have a queen in here out of that cutout I saw her and rather than try to grab her I sucked her up in the back because if I dropped her she was going down in the bottom of a wall where I couldn't get to her I thought about making a split off of this one today because I have some queen cells but if she's laying really good I'm going to add some more new wax foundations let them build out and let them grow a little bit so i can get some more splits off of them she's laying this is all eggs and larvae all through here and they're starting to build a little bit on the bottom of the frame so i'm going to go ahead and add some more frames to this stack them out a little higher that bottom box has no frames in it because that's my dump box so i take this top box off and fill that bottom one up Kai, come here, boy. Come on, I got some beetles for you. Come on. <laughs> if I had some plastic to rattle, he'd come over here thinking it was a feed bag. Well, yeah, third frame in. We're building drone comb. Oh, and there's a queen cell. Dang it. It looks like an emergency cell. All this is laid up, though. Every bit of it has eggs and larvae in it. So I wonder if something happened to the queen in the past couple of days. I don't know why they would be replacing the queen because 
Got it. Let me see if there's an egg. They're working it. I know there's an egg in there. Gotta be. Can you see one? Because I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. They're working it awful hard. And it's in a position of a an emergency cell. So we're going to... I'm going to stack it out and probably stick a couple of cells in here. They're not acting queenless, but I'm going to go through the box. I haven't, I didn't see the queen. She's been laying just like right up until at least the past couple days. There's not even half the bees that I put in here from that cutout. So I don't know where the rest of the bees went. And if the queen's gone, I don't know where she went. But obviously I have lost some bees somehow because I dumped a ton of bees in here. Uh, a back, back basket and a half. I had two back baskets on the job. Filled one up and half of another one. And again, I've only had these in here for uh, about a week. Just more, here's more evidence of how new they are. They don't, they don't have anything propolized. It's a brand new box. It looks kind of old because it was sitting out the weather before I assembled it. But brand new box, no propolis on the frames, brand new frames. I'm gonna go through one more time, see if I can't spot a queen. If I can't, I'm gonna go on and have enough resources in here that I can make some kind of so so splits, which I don't like doing right now because the high beetles are so bad. I need all the population I can get to fight them. They're not bad in this box, but some of my others are just terrible. Definite eggs and larvae in that frame. There she is. She looks good. She's working. Don't see anything wrong with her. And she is definitely laying these frames up real good. This is on an apple may bottom. Acorn frames that we've overwaxed. I'm using the beetle gels. They don't have to be full, just one uh, dropper is all I'm using. They hang on the frames like this and I'm gonna hang it on a brood frame. I like these better than those little black and clear traps that press down that the beetles can hide under. These are a lot nicer and they're reus reusable. That's how that one's set up now. Full bottom, moved a couple of the drawn frames down in the bottom, uh, checkerboarded a couple of new frames in the top. This is facing west, so that's the south side. I've got a migratory top on, and then a bottom board sitting on top of that just to block the sun a little bit. And since I don't have another hive sitting right next to it on the south wall, I just prop something up. I need to come up with something a little nicer to cover that south wall, but I want to keep the direct sun off of them as much as I can. I would cover south and west side if I could. So out of desperation, last night I put some of those soft peppermints. These are the hard ones. I put some of those soft ones in every hive on the yard. Uh, that hive there, I put two in it. There's no evidence of that peppermint anywhere in that hive. So I, so they took it all in last night. I did not open it ahead of time to see what the beetle population was like before. All I did was pop the lid and shove some of those soft, uh, they're easy to crumble. So I just shoved them in between the frames. I mean, there's no evidence of crumbs or anything. So that cell that they've got drawn is way more than since yesterday. So it wasn't anything I did yesterday that caused them to build that out. They don't have the numbers to be swarming or to be swarmy. Uh, they had drawn that one piece of drone comb off the bottom of that frame. 
So I don't know what's going on with them. They know their situation better than I do. They know why they would or wouldn't keep that queen. I'm gonna leave her in there for right now and I'm gonna leave it a cell as well. I'll come back and check them in three or four, five days and see what that cell looks like. See if the queen's still in there. I'm hoping they let her keep on going because she's laying real good. She's got three frames laid up already. And uh, so I put oil trap and peppermint and I also have some stuff that I picked up at Dollar General yesterday or at Family Dollar. Dollar General was out of peppermints. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I was desperate. So I picked up these if I couldn't find peppermints. Family Dollar had peppermints though. But that little dropper I'm using came out of one of these baby things at, the, at uh, Family Dollar or Dollar General. And I also picked up a new pack of uh, Swiffer pads. This is all I could find there. These are uh, odor defense. I prefer the scent free, but these probably will do just fine. And we're gonna start putting some Swiffer pads. Not in that one. It, I didn't see that it needed it. It's got a beetle trap and, and uh, peppermints in it, but these are one side fuzzy, one side flat, and I just put them in there flat out with the fuzzy side up. It will catch a few bees, but once the bees work this in and glue it to the, they'll, they'll propolize it to the top of the frames. Once they get that propolized and start kind of chewing on it, it'll catch beetles like crazy. So I've got some other um, tricks that I'm gonna be doing that I'll show y'all later, but these beetles are bad this year, I'm telling you. They, it's probably the worst I've seen them on this yard. This is at my house. So I'm just pulling all the stops. I talked talk with my brother about it yesterday. He's of the opinion when you've had hives on the yard for too long, the beetle population starts to build up. And I probably wouldn't argue that point with him, but uh, I've used this yard for 10 years. We've owned this property for 10 years now. And I've had hives on this yard every year and never really had that big a problem. You know, occasionally we'll get a, a little problem in summer or, or uh, after we're done selling nukes, but this year's just been unusually rough. So that's what I'm doing, beetle control. That's my arch nemesis is the small high beetle. And when I get that other stuff put together, you can't just use Swiffer pads just on their own. But I've got some other things I'm gonna add to it. When I get all that done, I'll put a video out about it and it probably won't be anytime soon. So uh, don't even ask, <laughs> don't even look for it. It might be next year. So that was the first hive today that uh, I've got 10 more to go through here right, right quick. And I know I'm gonna make some splits on at least two of those. Hope you enjoyed that and got a little something out of it. Uh, if you got questions, post them below and I'll uh, get to you as I can. Thanks for watching. So I'm gonna elaborate a little more because I didn't explain much at the beginning of the video as to how I lost colonies to adult small hive beetles. So when I pop these boxes open, they're really good at corralling beetles between the top bars of the frames and the lid. I'm not running inner covers, so the lid is is uh, like that far off the top bars. And they'll build propolis corrals and corral the beetles up. Or they'll corral them down the back corners of the boxes a lot of times, which is, they had both in these boxes. So if you've never seen 500 a thousand maybe small high beetles in one spot it's pretty impressive when you crack a box open and they just scatter I'm, I'm gonna say 500 300 would be a conservative estimate but but it was a lot so when i pop the lid not expecting that many high beetles i've never come out of winter with this many small high beetles they've been they've been bad before but not like this uh, when i pop the lid they just scatter so I've broken a bunch of corrals. I've interrupted the bees doing what they're doing, keeping these beetles under control. And the small hive beetles just scatter all through the hive. So they're just all down every single frame. And it starts running bees out. The bees just get overwhelmed with what they've got to do to, to re-corral these small hive beetles or whatever. And on top of me smoking and, and breaking the, the uh, 
bridge comb between upper and lower frames. They've got drone brew built in between all that. They've got to correct all that, put all that back together, haul out the dead. So between the damage I do and the small hive beetles, I lost two really good hives this year, two three stacks that could have made uh, probably eight splits easily, uh, maybe more. But the, the afternoon that I did these inspections, <clears throat> there was more than a normal amount of bees just hanging on the box and not really bearding, but just piled on the front of the box above the entrance and across the front and sides of the boxes. And I didn't really pay much attention to it. I was just like, yeah, they'll go back in overnight. And then the next day when I came out, they didn't go back in. There was even more bees out front. So the, the bulk of the population of both of those colonies were hanging out on the front of these boxes. Uh, queen and all, just evacuated, give up, can't handle it, we're out. And so not... And by this time, it's too late. All the brood's chilled and dead. We've had some cool evenings. So when you've run bees out of a box for that long, there's no chance in saving that much brood. Uh, so I didn't even try. I just scraped the bees into new boxes with new foundations and let them start over again. But it, it cost me two really big, strong uh, hives. And so... I was really just grasping at straws, trying to try them whatever I could. And so I'll, get on, I'll talk about the peppermint method a little bit, which uh, amazingly enough, I, in a, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying it works, but I think that's what did the trick here. So uh, as soon as I knew I had a problem, I went to Dollar General looking for peppermints and last time i tried this i got the old hard brax candies this time i wanted them to intake that stuff as fast as possible and they had those big fat round soft peppermints and i was like they can go through those faster than they can a hard peppermint so that's what i did i got the big fat soft peppermints and i stuck them in between frames if they wouldn't fit i crushed them down in because they're soft and you can bust them up real easy i stuck those peppermints in every box i have uh four peppermints per box two on the nuke boxes and and with the with that beetle load and and the other some of the other boxes some of the single stack or, or single boxes i had gone through had a pretty heavy beetle population as well and uh so i didn't want to lose anything on the yard for beetle issues so i stuck peppermints in everything on the yard two days later i go back and and or maybe a day later i don't know day or two later anyway i go back and start making splits on other boxes and doing inspections and i'm not finding high beetles i'm finding uh maybe two or three in a box nothing to be concerned about after seeing hundreds and i'm like you know it's not and i'm saying i don't i don't know for sure because i don't know that the other boxes didn't have them to begin with and because when I opened these boxes, it was late. I didn't look. I just opened the boxes, stuffed mints in them, closed them, moved on. I had a lot of boxes I needed to, to put mints in. I'm still not certain, but a day or two later, one day, it was one day later, one day later, my high beetle issue cleared up. And, uh, and yeah, it was one day later because the, the very next day I was putting beetle traps, oil traps. So... I like the uh, beetle gels, and uh, if the peppermints work, great. I don't know that I can come back every week, every week after week after week, putting peppermints in because they go through them really fast, but or, or every two week, whatever it takes. But this time, I think it paid off. <laughs> still, there's still a lot of speculation there, and still a lot of testing to do to figure out did that really work or am i just was were those the only two hives that were just overrun infested so take it for what you will do your own testing please don't take my word that this is the end all be all to hive beetle management because i have no clue i just know what i saw this time and um 
of course, you know, the rest of those boxes, I hadn't been through them yet, so I don't even really know for sure. But it's not, it's not common to have two boxes on a yard that have, if, if I, man, I wish I could have scraped those beetles into a bucket just to show you how many there were. If I say there's 300, I'm undershooting. It was three, four, 500 beetles in both of those boxes easily. So I don't know, do your testing figure out what you think works right now i'm just throwing everything at them i'm throwing oil traps swiffer pads peppermints uh, i don't have any oil tray bottoms left or, or i'd be doing that too so that's that's what's up now i hope y'all enjoyed it have a good evening